Hi again. This program is going to take a look at a few definitions in this unit, in particular oxidation and reduction and oxidizing and reducing agents. Let's begin with a chemical equation that I've got written down here. And let's quickly review the determination of the oxidation states of these elements. So iron with a 2 plus charge has an oxidation state of plus 2. I, again, I have to emphasize that charge and oxidation state are written slightly differently. Copper here by itself, not combined with anything, has an oxidation state of zero. Over on this side, once the reaction's over, copper has a plus two, and iron here has a zero oxidation state. Now, we define reduction as the gain of electrons. So moving from one side to the other side, which side gained electrons? Well, we can see that iron with a plus two oxidation state, in order to obtain a zero, charge, this must have undergone a gain of electrons. We would say it's been reduced, which is our second definition. It's a reduction in the oxidation state. So going from plus two to zero, we can see that that has been reduced in charge or reduced in oxidation state. So this is our reduced species. Copper, on the other hand, to go from zero to plus two, it must have lost electrons. And we refer to that change as oxidation. Now, the species that causes oxidation is called the oxidizing agent. So, if copper has been oxidized, the species that caused that particular change must have been the iron. So, this species, I'll write it down, is my oxidizing agent. So I'll define the oxidizing agent as the OA. Conversely, this reducing agent is identified as the species that causes reduction. Well, we've seen that the iron here has been reduced. The species that caused that would have been the copper. That then is my reducing agent. It's worth noting the reducing agent actually undergoes oxidation. Similarly, the oxidizing agent actually itself undergoes reduction. Let's take a look at applying these terms to this next reaction. Again, we start by identifying the oxidation states of our species. So chlorine is zero. Potassium being in the first family, I know is plus one. And oxygen being a halogen is minus one. Over on this side, copper again, uh, so potassium again is plus one, and chlorine minus one, and iodine zero. I usually begin by identifying what species has been reduced, whose oxidation state has become smaller. And I can see very quickly that indicates reduction. And if that has been reduced or undergone reduction, the species that caused it was this species. So this must be my reducing agent. Conversely, I can see moving from this side to this side that iodine has undergone a change. It must be the opposite change. It must have lost electrons. So this corresponds to oxidation. And the species that caused it over here, the chlorine, would be called my oxidizing agent. Let's look at one last reaction. Again, start by identifying their oxidation states. So hydrogen is always plus one, unless with a metal. Oxygen here is minus two. Let's figure out what sulfur is. So I've got X, I've got two hydrogens, and I've got four of those, so that's going to be minus eight. And that total must equal zero, so I can see that sulfur here must be using a plus six oxidation state. Barium, being in its, that particular family, is plus two. Oxygen minus two. Hydrogen plus one. Over on this side again, barium is plus two. Oxygen minus two, 
And again, solving for sulfur, it'll be the same as before as plus 6. Oxygen minus 2, hydrogens plus 1. A quick examination indicates that there has been no change in anybody's oxidation state. Therefore, this actually is not a redox reaction. Not all reactions are redox reactions. This particular pattern, double displacement reactions, typically are not redox reactions. In our next program, we'll take a look at predicting whether or not reactions happen. Thanks for watching.